Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Tom Vassell. And today we're taking a look at For Sale Autorama. This is a uh, reworking, I guess, of a classic game that uh, you've talked up for years now. Well, For Sale. The original For Sale. Which we yes. have here. I was telling Chris, it's it's almost perfect. It, it is. It, it's, it's pretty close to a game. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I'll never say a game is for everyone. But it's close to being for almost everyone. Right, so this is a new reimagining from Eagle Griffin Games. The same designer, Stefan Dora. Uh, you can, so Autorama has one new phase in the game, or you can buy just a little expansion box if you own the original one, one that looks more like this, uh, which is the advisors. Does it still use the same advisors? It has the same advisors, different artwork. So they have a, they have the cheerful kind of 90s, um, almost, you know, d uh, not d like Ziggy looking comic strip type thing. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's a word I haven't heard in a while. Yeah. So it also probably doesn't say cars. It says houses instead. Okay. Exactly. Right. I honestly, when I first saw this, I thought it was a solo way to play the game. It looks like Automata. Yeah. I just, I just assumed that's the case. And then I thought, oh, they just rethemed the game for cars, which they did, but they added in a whole extra phase. I'm going to show you what that extra phase... I'm going to show you how to play the whole game in case you don't know for sale. Uh, but at the end, I'm going to zoom in on all of the new cards, just the new one phase, and explain what that's like. So uh, go ahead. We'll show you how it plays, then give you our thoughts. Here's an example setup of a three-player game of For Sale Autorama. Now, this game does go up to six players. Uh, there are three phases to the game. First, you're trying to recruit different advisors here who will then allow you to get different vehicles, which then you'll flip these vehicles for these checks over here. And whoever has the most money remaining from the starting money and from these checks at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game. If you're familiar with the original for sale, you'll know that that game was played over two rounds. You're selling off, you're trying to buy these little houses here, which then you can use to get these checks for money. So this is played over three rounds slightly differently. Let me show you how each round plays. First, you're going to be auctioning off for advisors. You'll put out a number of advisors into the middle of the table equal to the number of players, and you're going to do an auction. As the first player, you put out a bid. Let's say two. The next player has to either bid higher than you or pass. If they pass, they'll take the lowest available card out here into the supply. Let's say that the other player does bid above you. You now have the option to keep going higher or to pass. Um, if I pass now, I would take back half of my bid and the other half would get spent and be gone from the game. And then I would take the next lowest card. And then the last player, whoever bid the most, is going to spend all of their money and get the highest advisor. You do this over multiple rounds until you have gone through the advisor deck and everybody has crafted a hand of cards. You'll notice now that we have a handful of advisors of these numbers 1 through 30. We're going to be using these now to try to get cars. So you will flip over a number of cars equal to the number of players and set them out in ascending order 8, 19, and 23. Starting with whoever won the last big auction, or the, last, the biggest card of the last auction, you'll play out one card face up in front of you. The next player will place out a card, and the last player will play one of their advisors as well. Whoever played the lowest number advisor gets the lowest level vehicle. Whoever played the second one will get this one, and whoever played the third will grab this one. The advisors do have special abilities that we'll cover here at the end of the video. So you continue doing this until you've gone through all of the vehicles and you now have a handful of vehicles. Now that every player has a handful of vehicles, we're going to enter the last stage of the game. We're going to flip over these checks equal to the number of players, and then we're going to each simultaneously choose a card from our hand pull it out face down, and then all players will reveal them at the same time. Whoever played the highest number gets the highest value check, whoever played the second highest gets the second, and whoever played the lowest will get the lowest value check. And remember that these are just points at the end of the game, along with the leftover money that you have. You'll discard all these and continue going again. With a new flop of cards out here in the middle, the checks range from $0 all the way up to $15,000. $15, and you're just trying to get the most money by playing the, your cards the savviest. And when you reveal them, continually getting this money. So that's the idea of the game. You play until this deck runs out. You count up your value of checks and leftover money. And now we're going to talk about advisors and how they can also give you some more money as well. 
As I mentioned before, the previous for sale was only the two rounds, the houses and then the checks. So the advisors are the new part here. So you see that the advisors are split, are, are basically grouped into three. The one through three is all sales associate, so on and so forth, which each of these. So let's talk about what these special powers are, as this is what's the newest thing in the game. Number one through three, the worst cards. If you win this in an auction, you take all of your money back instead of half. The consultant allows you to take a thousand dollars or a point from the player to your right. The mechanic you hold on to until you do the car, the uh, the um, the car card reveal. If you take this, if you have the lowest one, you get the second lowest check instead of the single lowest. The controller, each check, uh, your lowest check that you have at the end of the game is worth this number 10, 11, or 12, so if your lowest check is like a 5, it's now upgraded. The 15s, the fleet manager, if you pay $3,000 when you are trying to uh, win the cars, you can upgrade this from a 13 to a 31, or 14 to 32, or 15 to 33, so 30 is no longer the highest card guaranteed in the deck. Over here, the sales directors, if you get a card of a car card of at least 16, 17, or 18, then you earn, earn 3,000 additional dollars. The lawyer allows you to play out two vehicles during the simultaneous reveal, and after, uh, based on what everyone else's flop is, you can do, choose which one you want to keep out. The restoration specialist, you choose one of your checks worth two to $9,000, and you can double it at the end of the game. Each financial advisor makes each of your leftover money worth an additional point. So rather than this simply being 10 grand or 11 grand, this would be 22, and these do stack. And then lastly, general manager, if you don't win the highest, uh, the, the highest vehicle while playing these, you get 4,000 from the bank. So that's what's different. These fire off at different times and give you different amounts. So at the end of the game, the player with the most money is the winner, and that's for sale Autorama. Tom, I don't, I don't want to hype up for sale too much, but I don't disagree with you that for me, that game that came out in 1993, 98 or so, it's nearly a perfect game. It's really good. Two halves, an auction and then a simultaneous reveal phase, uh, groups of three to six. I've had so much success teaching this to people because it's such an easy to teach game. Uh, you've always said, I remember you and Sam would uh, hype this up a lot and say, you can just teach the first half without teaching the second half. Yes. And then it just works because people understand, I want higher value cards. Yeah, and it's also one of the few games that works really well with five to six players. Mm -hmm. People understand auctions, they understand it, it just works really well. I have to say, if it wasn't... I'm, I'm a little at loss for words here because this game is designed by Stefan Dora, who designed the original game. If it had been anybody else, I would be in the camera shouting, Don't mess with a classic! It's his own game. I guess he's allowed to mess with it. I suppose, yeah. Was he forced to under gunpoint is my question. <laughs> Games are getting heavier these days. Make this more complicated. So if you look on the side of the box here for for sale, it says 15 minutes. If you look on the side of this one, it says 30 plus. It's true. It is! It, and so it's kind of a, we're kind of in a weird situation here. So Chris and I, we play a ton of games. I can play pretty heavy games. I actually understand this. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any problem. I mean, it took a little bit to learn maybe some of the new stuff. But now I got it. I understand the three phases, how they work together. And it's not that it's a game that's too hard for me to grasp. I just don't know. I even like some of these the advisors, things that the advisors are like, oh, it's a fun, kind of a fun thing. But it's no longer for sale. It's a whole new game. And taking for sale out of the equation, which you can't because it's in the name, I don't know if even just looking at this, the three phases, if there's enough stuff from phase one helping out in phase three. Mm. Does that make sense? I, I don't know how to explain it. The first one is so easy Done and shut. You have money. You don't spend the money, it's final points. You spend the money to get these cards, use these cards to get the points to win the game. Done. Here, you spend money to get cards that might give you points in the game. They also might give you a better way to get things in phase two. Phase two, then, we take these to get the points that will probably win us the game, but maybe not because the cards in phase one are affecting them. And the cards in phase one also have special abilities that you have to explain uh, what is this? This is 10 different special abilities that you have to explain over the course of the game. Some of yeah. them fire off immediately, some fire off in the second phase, some fire off in the third phase, and some are end game phase. That is a great idea in theory, but 
the reason why I love for sale is that it I don't have to worry about any of those things. 15 minutes, easy to teach, uh, people grasp it right away, and now you're throwing a lot of wrenches in those gears, like multiple wrenches in what I think are gears that operate so smoothly. So it depends what you, I think it depends what you want out of for sale, because I, I, it would be easy to say, this is too complicated for such a small, simple light game. The only, the only way I could really see this game being like a big hit, having this whole extra phase and stuff added to it, is at, one of my, at my last job, I would play for sale at lunch. A bunch right. of accountants sitting around. We'd play for sale. Awesome. You can knock out like two games after eating uh, during your lunch, your one hour lunch and get back to work. If I played this like weekly with the same coworkers, I bet I could pull this one out. Say, hey, here's one new phase to it. Special powers. Some nice mix up to a good classic game. With the same group, without having to teach anyone new at the table, the basic game of for sale then these advisors could be kind of a fun mix up because I still I think it would be like a hard I think it would be a hard teach though I know for sale backwards I don't, it's one of the few games I don't have to look at his rule book at all and forwards I usually do teach it forwards <laughs> but I mean I can do that it's easy and this takes a bit to get used to it feels like a bunch of for sale I was going to say that before you did your thing it feels like a bunch of for sale fanatics said we're getting kind of bored let's design the next game so if we take that out, okay, so I think we both agree, for sale, this is a game that could be sold in Target. This is a game that could be sold anywhere, mass market. You play this game, I recommend this to almost everyone. Absolutely. For sale, I'll tell my mama, mama, is not that one. So we agree on that. Absolutely. But what if someone's a hardcore gamer and they're like, I want a hardcore filler? Do you recommend it to them? I think there's better hardcore fillers. You know what I mean? I, th that's the problem is I, it, this, for me, feels like a game without a market because I want a game that is easy to teach, plays large group of people, don't have to explain too much stuff. Like there, there's, so many, there's so many hiccups for whatever purpose I'm trying to use for sale for. I struggle with... So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to take out my don't mess with a classic. Absolutely, sure. Okay, that's hard to do because... That infuriates me. That this like it's like if you're a chess fan and someone came and said we have a game that now adds cards to chess. This has been done. Chess fans say abomination. And while I don't, I'll be like I don't care. I don't mind adding cards to chess. I understand though the chess purist thoughts on that. And I don't want to be a troglodyte. How dare you have messed with for sale? And and, and to this credit, I like a lot of these powers. I think honestly, Tom, a big part of it is that three phases of the game is just kind of too long for what it I almost wish they had added the powers and kept it two phases somehow. Yeah, the cars were special powers or something like that. That'd be kind of fun. You'd have to, and it would clean up some of the issue where like, hey, there's four different ways these cards could take place based on the card background and everything. Uh, yeah, so yes. I waver between, again, like I said, rage and, eh, it's interesting. I wish I liked it more. So I'm coming in at a five. And that is the highest I can do. Because there were points where I wanted to give it a one. That's how annoyed I was. <laughs> um, and I still think there's too much going on. When I'm sitting there wondering, is my 30 the highest? I don't like that. Sure. I don't like that you can turn your 15 into a 33. Just the fact that you start with 24 money. as a, It's like almost, or whatever it is, it's almost double the money you start with. How much money do you start with? You start with 24 or 28. 24 or 28, and in the original game, you started with 18. Okay, so I guess not that much more, but... <sighs> it makes some of the power that you have to spend some money for powers, which that's... You start with 14. You start with 14 minutes. I don't, I'm older. I'm going to play 5 to 6. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. You have to spend money now to activate certain cards in the middle of the game. That's, a, that's another decision point that kind of slows the game down. So, I am... <clears throat> <sighs> Score-wise, I'm coming in at a 6, because... I do like all of the parts that are in here. There's even a two-player reference card included. There's two-player rules you can go find with. You can go find online. It gives you the link to it. Uh, the QR code doesn't work, but there's a, you can find it online. And I like this little two-player thing. But I'm not here to play for sale with two players. Yeah, I guess it's, it's just it feels like I bought this really cool item that well, used to be used for something else, and now I use it for something, a different thing. I bought a shoehorn, and I'm using it as a spoon. 
Sure. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't recommend. Uh, I do like the car theme. That works. The car theming mm-hmm. as opposed to house. It's the same thing, really, if you think about it. Yeah. The components are fine. They're good, actually. Very good. They're really good. Quan Chi Moria's art. I like these little cardboard token, you know, for money. That's the thing. It's like everything about it is good, but I also recognize that it's not what I want out of for sale. So it's, I don't even th- want you to want it. That's the thing. No, I'm serious. I, I want a game. Look, there's plenty of very esoteric games out there. Yeah. There's very few games that fit everyone. For sale does. And because this has the same name, it's muddying the waters. That is a hard I thing. would hate for me to recommend for sale to somebody. And they played it with me, and they had a great time. They go to the store. They see this one. They're like, oh, it's the same thing but cars. They buy it, and then they're lost. That I don't like. I would, I would even prefer if in the rules here they said, hey, you want to play classic rules? Classic rules. They don't do that. I thought they did. It's, it's not in here. There's, not, there's, mm-hmm. there's nothing that says you can't, but there's not like... And, and that's what I think is maybe missing. Is that alone would make me say, hey, cool, an option. But the fact that, as you're saying, the way that this is packaged, that's the way to play is with the advisors. No, make that, a, make that an optional uh, advanced variant. You've played this game a lot. You're ready for a real challenge. Throw in the advisors. That's what it's for, not the basic way to play it. Um. All right. All right. Hey, this one still exists. You can still buy the original one. Absolutely, and I highly recommend that one. So I mean, uh, I really do. That's like a nine for me. Mm-hmm. It's really great. So. All right. So there you go. That's our thoughts on for sale Autorama. Thanks for coming by another Dice Tower review. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Tom Vassell. Keep those engines roaring.